Hey, welcome back to Backyards for Birds. Today we are going to finish planting our seeds. It's the middle of March and we're supposed to get a lot of rain tomorrow this weekend, so this would be a good time to uh, get the last seeds we're going to put in this year. We may put a few more in um, a little later on if I feel the urge, but for the most part we're going to be done with planting, planting our spring seeds. Um, first, let me show you what we've got. What I got here is just a few more of those um, wildflower seeds from the dollar store. I've got a tub here of uh, milkweed seeds that I harvested last year. And then this one on the end is kind of a potpourri of wild sunflowers. Um, there's some black-eyed Susans and a little bit of uh, other stuff that I've had in there that I'm just going to toss all together and then whatever grows, grows. I'm hoping out of all of this, well the milkweed, um, will grow hopefully, but more than anything, I'm hoping these wild sunflower seeds um, will germinate and take root. I had some in my yard a few years ago that just showed up and had this really nice thick patch of sunflowers and boy did it uh, bring in the birds and the butterflies and the, and the hummingbirds, especially like warblers and um, a lot of kind of little songbirds that kind of hung out in that really thick patch of sunflowers. So it was, a, it was really cool and I've been trying to get them the started in the in my yard every year and I've never had much luck germinating wild sunflower seeds they just kind of show up on their own on the kind of the edges of the property so this time I'm going to plant them in the interior part here and kind of nurture them a little bit more usually I just put them out and let nature take its course because they'll actually grow just about anywhere with almost no water um, so hopefully with this year with a little care I can get these uh, <coughs> wild sunflowers to get started and they generally um, will typically reseed themselves. So hopefully I can get them started in a good patch and they'll kind of uh, take off from there. <clears throat> the birds love them. Um, I've photographed a lot of monarchs and a lot of painted ladies uh, nectaring on those wild sunflowers. Um, the goldfinches love the seeds. So I love those more than almost anything in this yard. I'm hoping I can get a good patch of wild sunflowers growing. So I probably may get some uh, regular sunflowers um, from the store and just try to plant some of those like I did the last couple years, but I love these wild sunflower seeds. So anyway, this is what we're going to put in the ground today. And let me show you what we've done. I've actually moved my bird bath back inside my fenced area because um, we're planning on putting some chickens and some goats out on the out outside of this property um, kind of keep the weeds and the, and the bugs down. So what I've got, this is the bird bath I've had on the outside by the brush pile, which is going away. And then I've moved, I don't have feed in them right now. I've got three bird feeders up and another bird bath here. So I've got this kind of little square section in there. Now between all the bird feeders and the bird baths, and that interior section is where I'm going to just kind of toss out all the seeds and whatever grows, grows. And then the plan is, on the outside of this, over here and on the other side, I'm going to start planting some bushes. These, this area here gets a little bit more shade. So I'm going to put some bushes here that are a little bit more shade tolerant. That area over there gets a lot more sun, so I'm going to... Uh, that's why I'm putting the seeds on that end and I'm putting some bushes there along the fence and maybe kind of a couple interspersed there. So that's kind of the plan. So what we're going to do is just uh, spread the seeds in and rake them in as good as we can. As you can probably tell, I've got a lot of sparrows up in these, up in these big trees. And they love to come down and eat the seeds. And now that I've got the bird bass back in the backyard, they may be more prone to come and searching on the ground. So we got to get them raked in. But this is uh, kind of the first step of putting this back back piece here into uh, a bird butterfly garden. It's kind of been one of the last couple years. We're going to enhance it, um, kind of get more things to grow, especially the bushes. So we're going to uh, get these seeds spread out and go from there.
All right, that uh, didn't take too long. So we've got all the seeds and stuff raked in and we just cross our fingers and hope the sparrows uh, will leave it alone long enough for them to germinate. Now you might have been wondering why I didn't till that under and get rid of the grass um, and other vegetation that's kind of showing up there. And the reason for that is um, I've had wildflowers planted here a couple years ago and they've been coming back. Um, they grew well the first year and they came back pretty good uh, last summer. So I didn't want to disturb the dirt hoping that those wildflowers would come back. Part of that section I covered um, has wildflowers in it and the further part of it um, kind of past the bird bass didn't have very much so at least part of that had some wildflowers in it so I was just letting it be. Um, hopefully those wildflowers that I planted will keep coming back. If they don't then probably next year I'll probably till it up and um, start over again. Um, but for now, I'm just going to let's see what the wildflowers are going to do. They germinate really well, and we've had good luck with these uh, really inexpensive, these dollar dollar store seeds. I wanted to give them another year or so just to see what they're going to do to prove themselves. But it looks like there were a lot of perennials in there, and they uh, they grew really well, and they attracted uh, a lot of bees and butterflies, and the little uh, bachelor buttons uh, attracted some of the goldfinches to feed on the seeds. So we're just going to let the ground be and see what comes back and then decide next year if we need to turn it over and, and kind of do something a little different. So that's the reason why we just left it be and just kind of rake the seeds in on top of what's there. So anyway, that's kind of the plan. I do have one more plan that I'm going to do um, kind of just on this, the west side of that uh, past the uh, those hanging bird feeders and that is actually going to plant just a little strip of millet, some actual bird seed, and see if it grows. My brother has a lot of feeders in his yard, and he had a lot of bird seed actually germinate and grow, and had some sunflowers that grew that the goldfinches loved. And so we're gonna try planting some more bird seed here and see if it grows, because the whole idea is not just to feed the birds in the bird feeders, but to try and grow some stuff that the birds can benefit kind of naturally. So some of the bird feed you buy will actually germinate and grow, especially like black oat sunflower seeds. That's what we had really good luck with um, in my brother's house. In fact, we didn't plan on any of it growing. It just grew, just kind of the spillage off the, off the uh, bird feeders just started to uh, germinate and grow. And it had a lot of really good, healthy, sunflowers grow even with very little to no water in his yard from the black girl sunflower seeds. So I got the idea of maybe planting some bird seeds, some millet, maybe some black girl sunflower seeds this year or even just let the spillage germinate on, on its own from the seeds and just let some of the seeds grow on their own so to kind of help the birds. So that's probably one thing I'm going to add to this is toss out a little bit of bird seed um, around the outside edge of it and see if we can get some millet growing, so. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is the millet. It's very common and a lot of bird foods. Goldfinches love it. I feed it just about as much as I do um, thistle seed or niger seed. So it's really, uh, it's really popular with songbirds. So I've had good luck with it and I uh, continue to feed it. So this is what I'm gonna put out. Um, over kind of just next to where I just planted and just see if it's going to grow. Now this is really going to attract the sparrows if they um, get wind of this being on the ground. So I'm really going to have to rake this in really good. But we'll see what we can do so we don't attract any more sparrows than, uh, than we already have. So let's uh, spread it out and rake it in. All right, we uh, 
have the millet raked in um, really good this uh, this time so hopefully the sparrows will leave it alone and we're gonna see what happens if, if, if they grow if it grows it grows if not then we'll uh, do something again next year this is more mo more of an experiment than it is anything else since we've had uh, pretty good luck of having some bird seeds germinate in my brother's house I wanted to do the same thing here so anyway um, we're gonna come back every so often on this piece here throughout the summer and kind of show you how it's doing and we've got some other bushes we're gonna plant in here so every time we do something with this area we're gonna cut in and do a video on it and a blog post on it to kind of keep you updated how things are going and what works we'll keep working on each year and what doesn't work will change so this is kind of how backyard bird, bird gardens and nature gardens is there's a little bit of trial and error uh, but the basics is provide food, water, and a little bit of cover, and you should have success. So, and it just there's a little variance on what exact plants and what exact um, things you need to plant for your area. But basically, if you provide food, water, and shelter, you've got it pretty much covered. So, anyway, feel free to uh, subscribe to this channel and go to backyardsforbirds.com, and you can uh, follow us there. And we will catch you on the next video.